Okay, so we're awesome. talking about high blood pressure today and life-saving things you should know if you have high blood pressure. I, I think that the thing that is really striking to me and to a lot of my patients is to find out how common high blood pressure is. You know, the, mm -hmm. the latest data, 46% of adults in the United States have high blood pressure. And once you get older, it's almost universal. Uh, that If you're over 74 years of age, 85% likely you have high blood pressure. So, uh, you know, that that's a, a, a kind of a crazy statistic in itself, but I think even more impactful is what does it mean if you have high blood pressure? And what that means, the, the worry about this and the reason the high blood pressure is often called the silent killer is because you may not feel your blood pressure. You know, some people do. Some people have symptoms when their blood pressure gets too high, but most people do not. But it is putting that person at very high risk of the things that we're worried about, like heart attacks, like strokes. And it's part of an unhealthy metabolism. You know, the, the, it, it all kind of fits together in a lot of people. It's unhealthy weight, high blood pressure, unhealthy cholesterol levels, unhealthy blood sugar levels, all of those things are synergistic and driving the, the diseases that we're most worried about, the heart disease, stroke, dementia, cancer. All of those things have that same base root cause, which is an unhealthy metabolism. So today I want to talk about high blood pressure in particular uh, and give people some, some one, some, some reality check about blood pressure, how important it is how, uh, how, but also how much opportunity they have to lower that blood pressure and take better care of their blood pressure than, uh, than, than, than is generally being uh, seen in, in people. And, you know, uh, another just striking statistic for me is that uh, less than half of the people that have high blood pressure actually have it controlled under control and generally that, that some there's different definitions of that uh, generally that's less than 140 over 90 what I recommend though and I think what the latest literature is is less than 130 over 80 millimeters of mercury that's the that's that's well controlled uh, mm -hmm. blood pressure so today the three things that you should know if you have high blood pressure and Number one is to know your numbers. And the reason that I'm putting the emphasis on your is that while it's maybe common sense to think that the blood pressure taken at the doctor's office is the most accurate one, it's absolutely wrong. The blood pressure at the doctor's office does not uh, correlate with the gold standard blood pressure measurement uh, up to two thirds of the time. We have learned over the last decade or two that the blood pressures in doctor's offices is not the best blood pressure to use when making decisions about how to treat blood pressure. I, I, I learned this also the hard way. Like I always thought, well, of course my blood pressure that I'm taking is the best blood pressure because I'm the cardiologist actually the doctor's uh, blood pressures, when the doctor takes it, that's actually the worst one. Um, so I, it's really important. I emphasize this to all my patients who have high blood pressure, they're being treated for high blood pressure, or they have pre, with, with what doctors call pre-hypertension, meaning, you know, borderline blood pressures. You are going to do yourself a great service by monitoring your blood pressures yourself at home. And fortunately, there's great devices to do this these days. You can get, you know, highly rated blood pressure cuffs on Amazon for $30, the highest end ones, you know, the ones that, that are most recommended by the consumer uh, agencies are, are generally made by Omron, O-M-R-O-N. Uh, they have several of those. Those can be anywhere from $70 to $100. Uh, there's a really good one that's Bluetooth that connects to your phone from Withings, uh, W-I-T-H-I-N-G-S, uh, that uh, my client, my patients and clients uh, like a lot. 
what I would emphasize is get one that goes up on your upper arm, not on the wrist. The ones on the wrist may not be as accurate, but taking your blood pressures at home really is going to help you understand what your blood pressures are better, but also give that information to your doctor so that they can help decide on the best way to treat your blood pressure. Uh, it really and critically important to, to do that. Um, the other part about checking your blood pressure yourself and knowing uh, your numbers is checking your blood pressure in the right way. Um, it, it's easy to just sit down and wrap the gut blood pressure cuff on your arm and check it. Or I, I often have uh, patients of mine say, oh, well, I, I was upset. So I uh, checked my blood pressure or I was in pain or I was you know, whatever it was, and my blood pressure was high, that that doesn't help. Like, that's not the numbers we want to know. What we want to know is what is your blood pressure when you sat and relaxed for five minutes. So what, what I would emphasize is that you check your blood pressure the right way, uh, a, at least a handful of times. So you can check it right away, like sit down and just check your blood pressure. But then sit for five minutes, no phone, no conversation, no TV, nothing else just sit calm and relax in a in a chair with your back supported with your arm at heart level uh empty the bladder beforehand don't cross your legs and then check your blood pressure and see if there is a difference and if there is a difference then that's the way you need to take your blood pressure from now on to really get accurate numbers we, we did this in my clinic uh, a few years ago where we took blood pressures the usual way doctors take it, which is come in from the waiting room, sit at the, you know, the nurse's station and they check your blood pressure and get the weight and, you know, have you fill out the forms and get your temperature. Uh, but anybody who had a high blood pressure, greater than 130 over 80, we would put them in a room by themselves with an automated blood pressure cuff, quiet, told them five minutes, no phone no conversation, did it all the right way. And the average drop in blood pressure was 20 points for those people. So it really, really is important. If you can check your blood pressures at home, do it the right way. It's going to help you a lot because it's going to give your doctor information that they need on how best to treat you and maybe avoid unnecessary medications for you as well. So really important uh, to do that. Um, number two is something that I think is unrecognized. We referred a little bit to this at the beginning, but uh, the second thing I emphasize for all of my patients and clients who have high blood pressure is the opportunity to treat the causes of your blood pressure. Blood pressure is one of the things that is most responsive to treating the root causes. And I don't I don't know what those numbers are. Like I, I would say in my experience, at least 50% of blood pressure is mostly related to lifestyle choices. I've, I've seen experts predict up to 75% of people would not have high blood pressure if they optimize their lifestyle choices. Um, the point is really just for you individually, um, if not taking medications is really important to you, if lowering your risk of heart attacks and strokes and dementia are really important to you, then paying attention to the root causes of your blood pressure and treating those can be really powerful in lowering your risk and lowering your blood pressure as well. So we talk a lot about how to do that. We call it healing your metabolism. Uh, and the six ways that you can heal your metabolize, metabolism, all very effective ways in treating high blood pressure. What's the best regimen for you that's individualized? Everybody has a little bit different path to this, but they all have the same framework, which is being physically active, healthy nutrition, avoiding toxins like smoking and excess alcohol, uh, getting restorative sleep, particularly uh, if you have sleep apnea and that being untreated likely is going to make it very difficult to get your blood pressure under good control, uh, managing stress, and then staying connected, socially connected, connected to your purpose. Those six factors are really critically important in optimizing your blood pressure and oftentimes missed. Uh, it's, it's, 
kind of standard thing that doctors, you see high blood pressure, it's not coming down. Here's a prescription. Uh, that's the way doctors are trained. Uh, and that can be the right thing. Medications can be important, but recognize you may have an opportunity to get off of those blood pressure medications that you didn't fully recognize. And even small changes can make a big difference in blood pressure for some people. So uh, something that, that I think is critically important. And then the third thing that I want to emphasize, and at first it might seem like it's just the opposite of what I just said, but I, I, I want to emphasize how important it is to combine expert medical care with the lifestyle changes, the things you can do outside of the doctor's office. Number three is take your medications if they are prescribed and they are appropriate for you. Nobody wants to take medications. I get it. I don't want to take medications either. I don't want any of my patients to take unnecessary medications, but too often people are not taking their blood pressure medications. Their blood pressure is too high and they are unwittingly putting themselves at high risk for heart attacks and strokes uh, and dementia in the long run. So if you're doing everything you can for your lifestyle choices and you still have high blood pressure or you're working on your lifestyle choices uh, you, you, and you need the medications for now, take the medications as prescribed. And I guess I'll also add on that, um, it, talk to your doctor about this, but it may be better to take the medications at night. There is research showing that taking blood pressure medications at night is more effective in lowering the risk of heart attacks and heart failure and strokes uh, and dementia than taking the medications during the day. But it depends on the medications, like some diuretics or medications that can increase urination. Uh, probably don't want to take those before you go to bed. Uh, but talk to your doctor about that and see if that makes uh, a lot of sense. And then I'm going to throw in a bonus one here, uh, one to, to for a, a few of you um, that are really getting your uh, really struggling to get your blood pressure under control. Talk to your doctor about a endocrine problem, a hormone problem called primary hyperaldosteronism. This is a cause of high blood pressure that used to be thought to be pretty rare, uh, actually is increasingly noted to be more common than we thought. Uh, but doctors don't often think about this uh, as, as much because it's relatively new that the, this is a, a, a more common thing than we thought before. So if you're taking your medications, you're doing the things lifestyle wise that you should be doing and your blood pressure is still too high, the, the two things that I think are most important to look at are You there? Hang on, guys, one minute. Looks like we had a little technical difficulties. I love how everyone was commenting where they're from. If anybody else is watching, share where you're watching from. Um, and then, yeah, and if you have any questions for the end, Dr. Hurst will be back on in just a minute. Um, it looks like there was just a little glitch there oh there he is Can ah what happened <laughs> i don't know technology it's wonderful yeah. when it works <laughs> when, when did we go off i don't even know i was talking away um you were saying there's two things you could do did i did, so I, did i talk about primary hyper yes, yes okay you did oh so just stop okay so we're just at the very end that's that's great okay um so uh so if you uh, if you have what doctors call resistance hypertension, but what, what that means is you're taking your medications, you're uh, doing the lifestyle you know, uh, uh, choices that you should be following and your blood pressure is still, way too, is still too high, ask your doctor about two things. One is, could it be sleep apnea that is causing that the, uh, the blood pressure to be too high? And then this primary hyperaldosteronism, this uh, hormone problem, just ask your doctor if that's a possibility. It could be detected by lifestyle choice, or I'm sorry, lab testing, uh, and could be really important reason for uh, driving high blood pressure. So uh, with all that, uh, you know, high blood pressure is shockingly common, but also shockingly amenable to lifestyle changes and to medications when they're the right medications for that patient uh, and that, and that, that individual. 
Um, if you are somebody with high blood pressure and you're looking for ways that you could minimize medications, lower your risk of the things that we're worried about, the heart attacks, the strokes, the dementia, the heart failure, uh, if that's something that you're interested in and you're looking for expert guidance, then Rylan and I might you know, have a really good solution for you. And the way to find out is to schedule a strategy consultation with us. Uh, that's very simple. It's not, you know, it's not a high pressure sales thing. That's not what we're about. We're about uh, you know, talking to people, helping them get clear on what's the best opportunities for them to achieve their health and weight and longevity goals. Uh, and if we can help them do that, then then we're that's what we love to do. That's that what we that's what we really enjoy. Uh, and if not, we're going to still do the best we can to provide great value for you and give you guidance into where might be the best way to achieve your goals. So if that's of interest, we'd love to love to talk to you. So uh, with that, Rylan, uh, any questions that have popped up? Anything that I just talked and talked and and didn't stop? I, I apologize. <laughs> You're all good. Um, yeah. So some you sort of addressed this question already, but someone asked, and so I, I think it's important. So I, I think it's worth bringing up again or reiterating. Sure. But if I track my blood pressure daily, is it best to take it in the morning or evening or just consistent time each day, or does it even matter? Yeah, I like to move it around because it does matter in some people. So I, you know, I recommend that they take it. Uh, in the morning, when they first get up, uh, you know, check it again in the midday, check it in the evenings and just see if there's some variation there. Um, blood pressure is surprisingly difficult to pinpoint and especially in some people because it can be really variable through the day, depending on what's going on with them. And so, it, it, you know, for some people, I have to get the gold standard test, which is a 24 hour blood pressure monitor. That's where it's a cuff and it blows up every 15 minutes, even at night while you're sleeping, checking your blood pressure. That's the gold standard. That'll tell us what, uh, you know, what your blood pressure really is. But you know, barring that much more convenient is just to be able to check it yourself at home. So move it around a little bit. And then how often do you check it? I, I think we have to be careful with that as well, because for some people, they can get obsessive with this, like they're checking it like 10 times a day, and they come back with graphs and you know, all these things. And it's like the act of checking the blood pressure actually raises their blood pressure. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I, I say, you know, be practical about it. If we're making changes in your regimen, like let's say that we just made a change in medication, of course, you want to keep a closer eye on that. So checking that on a daily basis, or maybe even twice a day would make sense for a little while. But if your blood pressure has been stable for some time, you know, even checking it once a week or something might be the right thing. So I, again, I, I give my patients uh, and my cl our clients guidance on how often I want them to see their, uh, check their blood pressure. I'm not your doctor, though, or if I'm not your doctor, talk to your doctor about how often they want you to check your blood pressure. Awesome. Yeah, it's like it's like counting calories. Like if you're so obsessive with it, it actually like makes you eat more because it stresses you out more. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, have, I have some patients where the, just the act of taking the blood pressure yeah. raises their blood pressure so high that we it's it's almost impossible to figure out what their blood pressure is you know like we have to go do other things like the 24-hour blood mm -hmm. pressure monitor sometime i have to get like an ultrasound of the heart just to see if if there's evidence of high blood pressure in, in looking at their heart because just the act of taking it raises their blood pressure so much that it, it makes it impossible to see, yeah. okay, well, what is it? I don't know. Isn't that called like white coat syndrome or something like well, that? Well, yeah. So white coat hypertension is a entity that where people have high blood pressures in the doctor's office, but they have normal blood pressures at home. Uh, but you have to be able to measure it, of course, to be able to 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 tell that. Right. Uh, and and that is a you know that that's a an entity that is clearly known. I think though probably overdiagnosed because most doctors' offices don't take the blood pressure the right way. Like they're busy, they have to get people in and out, and they don't have people sit in a quiet room for five minutes before they check their blood pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, if they're checking it 
you know, in, in the in a way that's not the right way to check it, it's going to come out as high most of the time, uh, even though their blood pressure is normal when they're not in the doctor's office. So I think it gets overdiagnosed in those situations or worse, it gets treated, you know, and, and then people get, oh, well, here's a medicine for you when you don't need it, because right. when your blood pressure is taken the right way, your blood pressure is just fine. Interestingly, there's another entity that's the exact opposite uh, called mas masked, M-A-S-K-E-D. I have a hard time saying that for some reason, masked hypertension. And that's when the blood pressure is normal at the doctor's office, but high outside <laughs> of the doctor's office. Uh, I've heard, you know, the, the, the experts say that's about 20% of people. I haven't seen it that commonly, but I also have to, you know, admit that, that maybe it's because you know, people aren't checking their blood pressure at home as yeah. much uh, either. So there's just too, so many variables in here. I think you really need to talk with, with your doctor and work closely with your doctor uh, and take some, take that responsibility yourself, like take ownership of that blood pressure. It's going to really help you out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm curious that, um, for those of you watching, like leave a comment. How often do you check your blood pressure at home? Um, if, if at all. Um, and then one more question. So like what role do um, like toxins, like maybe other drugs or alcohol or, you know, smoking, what kind of role does that play in your blood pressure? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's all individualized, of course, smoking being the one that's going to raise the risk of the, of the blood pressure even higher. So smoking raises blood pressure, but the real concern with this is how additive it is in increasing the risk of stroke and heart attacks and heart failure and dementia. So that's toxin number one to, to get rid of. Uh, alcohol, I, I used to say to my patients, moderate amounts of alcohol wasn't a, an issue, which you know used to be two drinks a day for men, one drink a, whim, a day for women. But more recent re research says that alcohol over a drink a day uh, can uh, increase your risk of having high blood pressure by 50%. Uh, and so I, I think if you're drinking more than a drink a day, it, it may be a contributor to your high blood pressure. Again, that's individualized. You know, uh, it depends on the person, of course, but it is something to pay attention to. There are prescription medications. There's particular, uh, uh, um, you know, a antidepressant medication that's really popular that can raise blood pressure like seven to 10 points in some people. So uh, I think a good review of your medications is important to see if there's things there as well. And then, of course, we talked about it a couple of times, um, sleep apnea, another hidden mm -hmm. driver of high blood pressure uh, that people may not be aware of. Yeah. And then just to be clear, like is, is, um, high blood pressure, a cause of AFib. I know we've talked about that in the past, but yeah, the most common, you know, is it really? So, okay. you know, it's, it's, it's not always easy to tell cause versus association, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, that's the most common risk factor we see for AFib is high, high blood pressure. And it, makes sense, right? High blood pressure is very common. And so AFib is becoming very common as well. Uh, so absolutely, you know, it's not always easy to tell what's the contributors. Like, you know, there's age and there's high blood pressure and there's lack of physical activity and there's being overweight and having heart artery disease and other things. What's the, the percent contribution of all of those things? Uh, it's really challenging uh, to, to say that it's impossible, but What's clear is the best way to treat is to address all of those causes. Yeah, definitely. And uh, just so you guys know, um, Dr. Hurst came out with a uh, longevity guide, in essence. It's the guide on our 10 essential things. So you can like download all this information we're talking about it, talking about today. So in that guide will be all the ways that you can treat the causes of your high blood pressure. And then um, you know, the three things that we honed in on today in this discussion are also outlined in that guide. So if you go to healthspanmd.com slash 10, T-E-N, and you'll be able to, to download that and get that information from today. This information is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. 
Don't make any decisions about your medical treatment without first talking to your doctor. Thanks for watching, and if you want to learn more about living a long, healthy life you love, click the link below to learn more about how we help people increase their health span. And if you like this video, hit the like button below, share it with your friends, and be sure to hit the bell and subscribe.